WWE signs Dragon Lee to a contract for NXT. What does this mean for NXT? And what does Triple H have up his sleeve by bringing in a talent like Dragon Lee to WWE in 2023? We are going to talk about it right here on Off The Script. Also, a major name banned from competing in the WWE at the Royal Rumble. And CM Punk gives a major hint about a possible AEW return when he is cleared for in-ring action. All this plus so much more right here on Off The Script and a word from our sponsor for today's video. What happens if you cross the blockbuster movie with a real AAA game and then squeeze it all into a mobile device? It's genuinely revolutionary. What I'm talking about is Raid, and today's sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends. If you guys want something that's innovative, that blends PvE and PvP game modes, peerless character skill customization, clan-centered cooperative play, Raid is for you. Raid has prepared something special for all new players this Christmas season. Get ready to celebrate the 12 days of Raid. Enter your player ID and then set out on a fun festive adventure that lasts 12 days, running from December 19th to January 10th. Each day, experience a new chapter of this wintry story and play a new mini game for a chance to win some amazing in-game and real-life prizes, including holiday-themed raid champions and even Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. And Raid's got something extra special happening this holiday season. They've released a legendary champion based off MMA and pro wrestling legend, Ronda Rousey. Yes, the Ronda Rousey, as well as taking on dragons and ice golems with her bare fists. Ronda's backstory is pretty cool, taking some inspiration from her background in combat sports. You can get Ronda for free right now, whether you're a new or longtime player, just by logging into Raid. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and February 20th, and Ronda is yours. That's all there is to it. And to celebrate Ronda's arrival in Raid, you could also use the special promo code RAIDRONDA, available for all users, new and old, to get a bunch of helpful stuff. Like a three-day 100% XP boost, 500,000 in silver, and five full energy refills. Perfect for leveling Ronda up so that she's at the top of her game. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking about a free epic champion, Tayrell, 200,000 in silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard, so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you guys get into the game. And all this treasure will be waiting for you right here, available for 30 days for new players only. You guys know how I love to game. I love to loot, I love to grind, and I love to be the very best at everything. And that's what Raid truly gives you guys the opportunity to do no matter what you're looking for remember download raid for free by using my link in the description below or scanning my qr code on screen right now and celebrate the 12 days of raid and i'll see you guys in the game why has triple h been so successful why is triple h running wwe better than Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard on Monday and Friday night. Long-term booking. What is going on, guys? Thank you so very much for joining me right here on Off The Script. I got a little bit of extra for you. It is December 29th, 2022. I am your host, JD, from New York. As always, coming to you from the OTS venue. Thank you guys so very much for joining me on your Thursday afternoons, wherever you may be. Make sure you guys follow me on social media, at JD from NY206. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell for notifications. Make sure you guys go check out all the other contents 
on the channel, including last night's AEW New Year's Smash post-show live stream. Make sure you guys go check that out all on the homepage right now. And most importantly, because the algorithm should be the most important thing to any YouTube content creator, I need you guys to hit the thumbs up as we need 1,000 likes minimum today on OTS. We got a lot to get into, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to start off with this one. WWE usually, usually has their holiday tour roll through New York City, Madison Square Garden at Christmas time has been a tradition for many, many, many years for WWE. And this year, it was a little bit of a stressful situation as WWE talent dealt with travel issues getting into New York City for the Madison Square Garden holiday show on December 26th. PW Insider reported this week that the start of the tour included a lot of travel headaches for WWE talent and staff as flight issues led to some people being delayed in getting into New York City. Other stars were sent to different airports than originally planned in order to salvage their travel issues. As previously reported, WWE did pull Drew McIntyre from Monday's house show at Madison Square Garden where he was slated to work an eight-man tag team match due to his dealing with a ruptured eardrum. However, the advertisement had been changed to the Usos versus Braun Strowman and Kevin Owens. McIntyre is being given time away from in-ring action to heal as WWE has big plans for Drew McIntyre in 2023. Gunther versus Shinsuke Nakamura versus Ricochet versus Kofi Kingston versus Santos Escobar in a ladder match was also advertised for that show. I do believe there was a report that Santos actually got injured in that match. I hope that he is okay coming out of that ladder match. Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch, they missed their WWE house show for the same reasons, travel issues. Rollins and Becky Lynch were two of the major names that dealt with travel issues on Monday as WWE kicked off their post-Christmas tour. Rollins and Lynch posted on Twitter and explained that the tour bus that he and Becky Lynch were on broke down. Rollins wrote, I'm very sorry, we tried But by the time the bus broke down on the side of the road, we had no other recourse. Mike Johnson, a PW Insider, also noted that that they were told the bus was actually in Iowa last weekend in advance of this weekend's tour. And it would have been a 9 to 10 hour drive from Iowa, not factoring in harsh weather conditions. The travel situation for WWE talent was described as a total nightmare and beyond frustrating. We had that huge winter storm ravage Several parts of the United States, sub, sub below temperatures, ice, snow, terrible travel conditions. Uh, I think it was Southwest Airlines. They canceled over 2,500 flights. There were people that did not make it home for Christmas. There were people that did not make it home after they celebrated the Christmas holiday. Terrible, terrible situation. At the end of the day, I understand that the WWE superstars want to fulfill, and I know I've seen a couple of people, you know, express their disappointment. Oh, Rollins, I took my son, I took my children to come see Seth Rollins specifically at these shows, and whatever it may be, I know that they feel bad, but I hope that everybody on the other end, I hope the paying customers and the fathers and the families and everybody else understand that... It's not their fault, and this could happen to any body traveling during the holiday season. So as long as Becky and Rollins got to where they needed to go safely, as long as all the superstars got back to where they needed to be safely and got to the next city that they were traveling to safely, I think all is right in WWE. I know it was a total nightmare beyond frustrating, but at the end of the day, their safety is first and foremost important. Big news happened last night while we were live for AEW Dynamite. WWE announced the signing of a 27-year-old phenom in Dragon Lee. Dragon Lee is signed to WWE. He will be reporting to NXT in January by the earliest February. Why did Dragon Lee sign with WWE? According to Dave Meltzer, WWE saw Dragon Lee on AEW Dynamite in August, working without a contract. 
And then that set off a huge, hey, what if we go check this guy out from Triple H's camp? And by that time, Triple H was already in charge of everything WWE. Dragon Lee is the most recent big name star to sign with WWE as he announced the news during a Triple H, a Triple A show, not a Triple H show, not yet, a Triple A show on Wednesday night. It turns out that WWE was not interested in Dragon Lee until AEW put him on television without a contract. While speaking on today's edition of the Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer discussed the signing of Dragon Lee. He said, Dragon Lee and Drellistico wrestled for AEW. They beat AEW's FTR at Wednesday's show to win the AAA Tag Team Championships, only to vacate them right after the match. He says, and I quote, The deal was made a couple of weeks ago, but they were told to keep it quiet They won't make any announcement until they won the tag team titles, which is very interesting because they pinned an AEW tag team, which was part of the deal. Tony Khan was aware of it. I'm sure if this was reversed, it would have never happened. He was working in Mexico, and there is not a lot of money in Mexico. He and Drellistico, his brother, had a tryout with WWE. They wanted him. AEW wanted him as well. He was talking to various people, like with Bandito. WWE's interest in Dragon Lee came when they found out that AEW put this guy on television with no contract. So it was kind of like, hey, we can swoop in. That was one of the things. They came after him after that deal, and right after that, he was signed. But he was signed a couple of weeks back. That doesn't make any sense by Dave Meltzer. I'll get to that in a second. Let me reiterate what he just said. It sounds like a fucking dummy talking. And I appreciate Dave Meltzer. You might not, but I do. They came after him after that deal. And right after that, he was signed. But he was signed a couple of weeks back. That was the catalyst of it. And that was them finding out that AEW put a guy on television with no contract to AEW. Dragon Lee got over with fans in AEW when he was a part of a stable with Roosh and Andrade a few months back. Lee wrestled on the August 28th episode of AEW Dynamite, where he teamed with Roosh and Andrade El Idolo in a trios tournament against the Elite. The same match in which Andrade tore his pectoral muscle and will be out for nine months. I don't really, first of all, I want to say, I don't really get the excitement from the WWE fan base, the casuals, the, the, the people online that I know for a fact don't know Dragon Lee. All this fake excitement about WWE signing somebody that they had absolutely no idea about, no idea about, they're all excited about WWE signing Dragon Lee for the simple reasons that Triple H took another talent that Tony Khan was interested in and WWE got them before AEW did. I'm going to need you to curb your excitement if you don't know what the fuck you're talking about and you don't know who Dragon Lee is. I'm not saying you can't be excited. I think one of the best things about watching professional wrestling is watching somebody that you don't know grow and flourish and get better at his craft. That's what I love about pro wrestling. But everybody getting excited about this, oh my God, guarantee a large portion of you never knew who Dragon Lee was, and hasn't watched one single Dragon Lee match, whereas I have watched Dragon Lee. I've actually called matches for Dragon Lee with Solemn Monster in House of Glory with Dralistico. I know how fucking good they are, and I'm excited about him joining the WWE. Now, some of you might not be excited about uh, Dragon Lee joining NXT. Why NXT? Why not? Send the 27-year-old phenom to the main roster. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And if you look at this tweet by WrestleVotes, they told everybody today on Twitter that the signing of Dragon Lee by WWE is hopeful. The signing of Dragon Lee is hopeful that he will be the start of a standout talent agreeing to terms with the company. Hearing Triple H and crew have expectations to land other 
high quality names early in 2023. So now you see one of the reasons why Triple H signed Dragon Lee. A, how many free agent big names are out there that WWE could really bring into the company? There's not many. I really can't think of many. You know, they have eagle eyes on several different contracts expiring. You know, Chelsea Green's been talked about. Deanna perrazzo has been talked about. Dragon Lee is coming to NXT. Who's to say? Sammy Callahan has a contract coming up with Impact. I believe his contract is up in 2023 at some point. Who's to say that Triple H doesn't bring in Sammy Callahan back to NXT or back to WWE? There's not a lot of big-name free agents out there, but there will be a lot of big-name free agents readily available, some on AEW's roster. If Dragon Lee is signing with WWE, that could be the catalyst for other big-name talent to come and join WWE. This is not a Vince McMahon-run WWE anymore. You know, Dragon Lee would not be signing with WWE if Vince McMahon and Bruce Prichard were still in charge of everything creative WWE. Dragon Lee would be on his way to AEW. You don't think he's asked around about what to do, what's best for his life and his career? Hey, I'm sure he's asked around, hey, where do I go? Do I go join WWE? Do I go move and, you know, pack my life up and go move to Orlando? Or do I go move to Jacksonville where I can be all elite, AEW? And people probably told him, well, AEW is great, but WWE, the whole landscape of WWE is different now. Vince McMahon is not running WWE anymore. Vince McMahon looked down on Lucha Libre. Vince McMahon never pushed anybody not named Rey Mysterio with a mask. This is not Vince McMahon's WWE anymore. So that was probably a great catalyst for him to say, you know what, I'm going to take a chance on myself. I'm going to go to WWE, and I'm going to join NXT, and I'm going to start all over again at this thing that I love called pro wrestling. Why NXT? NXT sucks. I think everybody is pretty much understanding of that. NXT, whatever the fuck it is now, 2.0. Some people say it's a mix of 2.0 and black and gold. I mean, I don't know what the fuck it is. It has nothing to do with black and gold. It doesn't reminisce Anything of the black and gold, it's not similar to anything the black and gold was outside of a a similar looking logo, which is more white and gold instead of black and gold. NXT is not good. But sending Dragon Lee down to NXT to work with the trainers and the team down there at the Performance Center is probably going to be the best thing for Dragon Lee to get acclimated to everything that is WWE. He doesn't speak English. Or if he does, he doesn't speak English well. That's one of the main proponents about being a WWE superstar. You're going to need to cut a promo. Whether or not they facilitate him and get him up to speed on his promo ability, I don't know. They may end up pairing him with somebody. uh, a, A valet of some sort, a manager of some sort, a spokesman of some sort. We don't know. We don't know what type of plans they have. Cutting a promo, he'll be able to work on his English and cut a promo and work on his promo ability in NXT. You'd think because... He's a great pro wrestler that he's going to fit like a glove on the main roster. Sure, but this is WWE. The production side is vastly different from anything he's ever been a part of. That includes AAA and every other Mexican promotion that he's worked for, AEW, and wherever else he's worked overseas. WWE production is a different beast. I always go back to the interview that AJ Styles did when he first came in to the WWE, and he went right to the main roster. He said, I wish that I spent six months to a year in NXT. That's when Triple H was running black and gold. I wish they had put me on NXT so that I could get adjusted to the way of life in WWE and the way that they do things and operate. Entrance, production, camera angles, where to look, theme music, this and that. It's going to be a completely different world for him. And I'm excited to see what they do with him. The catalyst of bringing him in is going to lead to other talent potentially saying, hey, Dragon Lee, of all people, somebody that initially you think about if Vince was there, was doomed to fail, is going to NXT, going to WWE, because Vince McMahon is not there anymore. That is a huge proponent of why he went to WWE. Also, Tony Khan has how many fucking people contracted to the AEW roster? Look at Bandito. Look at Roosh. Look at all these fucking guys that are not on TV. 
he also probably thought, hey, I'm going to go to NXT where I could be a standout guy because I know I can be. I'm going to be a standout guy on a roster that is incredibly mid for the most part outside of a handful of names. I'm going to be a standout guy. On day one, I'm going to be a main event guy. On AEW, I could show up on night one, wow everybody, and then be off TV for the next three months because Tony Khan doesn't have enough TV time to have me featured in any meaningful way. That's another reason why he probably went to WWE and they're putting him on NXT. I like this move. I do. I'm very excited to see where he goes. I'm excited to see how he progresses. But Dave Meltzer is saying that, oh yeah, they saw him on AEW Dynamite. Triple H saw him on AEW Dynamite and they realized that he was working without an AEW contract and they swooped on in in August. I mean, I don't really believe that for a second. I don't believe that all because he showed up on AEW Dynamite that Triple H was like, yep, yeah, we got to get him. We got to steal him away from Tony Khan. Triple H has been doing this for over a decade while being in the position that he's in. If there's anybody in WWE that has a finger on the pulse, it is Triple H. And now with William Regal in charge and being in a vice president-like role, you don't think that they knew who Dragon Lee was before he even showed up on AEW Dynamite? How do you think the black and gold was built? They know. They have eyes and ears everywhere. Triple H probably was looking at this guy for months before his name was even mentioned last night. This is something that he is known for. Triple H, out of everybody, has his finger on the pulse, and he was probably looking at Dragon Lee long before he showed up on AEW Dynamite. I honestly think that the story about, oh yeah, he showed up on AEW Dynamite, and then that's when they got interested. I think that's nothing more than trying to get viewers and bait viewers to listen to The Observer and to bring some attention to what Dave Meltzer is doing. I don't believe that for a single second. I don't. I like this move. I do. But I honestly think that at the end of the day, it's going to be a different world completely for him. Nothing in this man's career is going to be the same. Nothing. We don't know what's going to happen. How many people, and we talked about this last night, how many people in WWE are successful under a mask? Seriously, outside of Rey Mysterio, name me one pro wrestler in the WWE realm that is successful in that type of environment while wearing a mask. They all shed the mask, all of them. Rey Mysterio at one point shed the mask in his career. He got fucking roasted for it, but at one point he shed the mask, put the mask back on. Andrade wrestled in Japan under a mask. He comes to WWE the mask is off. Santos Escobar wrestled with a mask in Mexico. He comes to WWE, and now he is without a mask. Look at Sin Cara. Where did he go after all the hype? Yes, that was Vince McMahon's era, but look at all the hype. Failed. He was in catering in two months. Look at Axiom on WWE's NXT show. I mean, he's a great wrestler, but the ceiling for someone like that Hiding himself under a mask. We don't know who the fuck he is, where he is, where, where he comes from, yada, yada, yada. It's tough to invest in somebody like that. Who's to say Dragon Lee is not going to shed the mask like everybody else and be given a new persona away from the mask? We don't know. WWE could certainly have the next Rey Mysterio in Dragon Lee. He's 27 years old. There's a huge possibility that he could be the next coming of Rey Mysterio. It's going to take a long fucking time to get there because the man needs to learn everything he needs to know about wrestling in the United States and working a WWE style. He needs to speak English fluently to be the next Rey Mysterio. It's not going to be easy. I'm looking forward to it. But you got to ask yourself that question. How many people in WWE, and this is Triple H, so I'm going to give it a chance. This is not Vince McMahon. How many people in WWE have been successful under the mask? Outside Rey Mysterio, zero. Zero. But I'm excited about this. I think the internet wrestling community are a bunch of clowns. I think everybody is jumping on the hype train for absolutely no reason because they think they know who he is. You don't know who the fuck he is. Let's see him get there. Let's see him show up. He can make a huge impact on day one. We don't know. This guy could be the guy that takes down Braun Breaker for the NXT Championship. We don't know. Until we see him and the direction that they give him, this is up in the air.
but I like the signing, and I think this could be a great catalyst for getting things going again on Tuesday night. The WrestleVotes tweet is very interesting. Is it going to be a catalyst to get other talents on the indies back into WWE? Could this be the real resurgence of NXT, more so moving towards more black and gold? That's what WWE did at the very height of black and gold. They brought in how many indie fucking talents, indie megastars that made NXT what it was. You guys know the names. You guys know the list, right? Is this the start of that? Because by the time Dragon Lee is ready to go on NXT, all those guys that you know and love on NXT now that have been on the show for months, they may be called up to the main roster. We're going to see a whole new set of, uh, of pro wrestlers. We're going to see a whole new class on Tuesday nights. Dragon Lee could be the catalyst to get Tuesday nights back moving towards more black and gold and moving away from the 2.0 garbage that we've been seeing on Tuesday night. Just something also to keep an eye out for, for NXT. CM Punk, he opens the door to possibly working things out with the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and AEW. It was all because of this Instagram post. AEW's Dax Harwood makes a plea for CM Punk, the elites, and AEW to find a way to make it work. And you see CM Punk there with the verified blue Instagram check mark, leaving a comment on some random pro wrestling podcast Instagram post. And he says, and I quote, duh. So, according to CM Punk, and what was said here by Dax, and this plea for Punk and the elite to find a way to make it work, he says, duh. Now, you could interpret that any way you want. Does that mean CM Punk is coming back to AEW? No, it does not. It does not confirm anything about CM Punk showing up in AEW again. Does it give people hope? Sure. I don't know why CM Punk... Someone with the status of CM Punk in the community, why he would think he could go under the radar there and not have anybody find out that he's Instagramming a comment to this. I, I don't know why he thinks this would go unnoticed, but it is what it is. I, 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 I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that CM Punk is back in AEW. Listen, I think at the end of the day, no matter whose side you're on, you're on punk side, you're on the elite side, you flip back and forth. Maybe you were on punk side and then you were on the elite side. Maybe you were on the elite side and now you're on punk side. A lot of what punk did in that scrum and the things that we've seen and the comments that we've heard and the statements that have been made in the months, I know, you know, leading up to where we are now, a lot of what CM Punk said is becoming more and more true, right? Do I think CM Punk's story was bullshit about Larry and, you know, the door being kicked in and, you know, everything that was going on there, A Steel being fired? Do I think what happened there is legit? I do. I think whatever they did at the scrum was not a work. I do think that the possibility of it being a work after the fact is a possibility. Do I think that everything that happened there legitimately happened and it was high tension and there was a lot of wrong that came out of that scrum? Absolutely. Absolutely, but I do think that, A, absence makes the heart grow fonder. B, I can't imagine Punk, Matt, Nick, Kenny, Adam Hangman Page, Tony Khan, and mostly everybody that was supposedly against CM Punk, I can't imagine all of these people collectively being this stupid and not realizing, hey, we could have the absolute mega storyline of mega storylines happening in 2023 to take AEW to the next level. Ratings would be up. Listen, you can throw your fucking theories out there. I'm going to put my conspiracy theory hat on. I am. I'm going to give you one right now. And this is something that's been talked about. 2023 is going to be the absolutely biggest year for AEW. They will be in the middle of contract negotiations with Warner Media. They're going to need something to really say, hey, we are doing what we are doing here, and we want more money, four, five, six times more money than what we're getting now with our original contract. You don't think that everybody collectively is going to be on the same page in 2023 
you know, leading into this contract negotiation with Warner Media and think, hey, we can't let AEW fucking be a sinking ship. We can't let Tony Khan down. We can't do this to the company. We love this company. We started this company. Everybody's eventually going to come to work together. This is going to be a huge money-making situation for AEW. This is going to be a huge ratings draw. The fucking feuds that are going to come out of this thing are going to be tremendous. AEW potentially could be looking at their first stadium show in 2023. Absolutely no doubt in my mind, you put a match together with FTR Punk against Kenny Omega and the Elite. Sell out on day one. Within hours. Done. Minutes, maybe. There's no way these six, seven, eight men are this fucking stupid. I think at the end of the day, with all of the time that's lapsed and CM Punk being injured and him being at home and things calming down, I honestly think that everything's going to come back and everybody's going to be working together. You know, we heard the rumors of Tony Khan wanting to buy out CM Punk's contract and what's the hold up and this and that. Oh, he's worried about Punk going back to WWE. I don't think Punk wants to go back to WWE. Triple H can say, yeah, you know, it could be water under the bridge. I'd do business with anybody. Roman Reigns out there saying, yeah, I'd work with CM Punk. I know what's best for business. If it means a good business decision for the company, I'll work with anybody, no matter how I feel about them. At the end of the day, this is too big of an op, too big of an opportunity to miss out on. Money to be made for everybody. I don't think that this is going to go and end AEW. I don't think Punk is leaving pro wrestling. I do think at the end of the day, all of this will be turned into gold on television. Is CM Punk giving you a glimpse into the future? Maybe. But this is typical CM Punk behavior. He's toying with your emotions. He's giving you a little trail of breadcrumbs to fucking pick at while he's laughing at home, recuperating from his injury. This is CM Punk trolling because that's what CM Punk does. I love it, man. It's humorous to me to find shit like this and CM Punk trolling everybody in the community, getting people talking. Why is Dax having CM Punk on his podcast as the first guest? I just find that to be so bizarre. Yes, they may be good friends, but of all people, CM Punk? Really? Something something was worked out. Something is going to be worked out. I honestly think this is all water under the bridge come next year. The holidays, everybody's in that fucking loving mood. Everybody's going to forgive and forget. And it's going to be a huge, huge deal for AEW in the midst of a contract re-up with Warner Media, I love it. It's going to be so good. I can't wait to see what happens in 2023. It will be their biggest year yet. Moving on. WWE wants Tyson Fury back in the company. Tyson Fury wants to compete inside the Royal Rumble. Tyson Fury wants a shot at WrestleMania. He wants a WrestleMania match. According to a report by the U.S. Sun... Fury wants these things. He wants to appear at the Rumble. He wants to appear appear in Los Angeles for WrestleMania 39. It will not look good to me if Tyson Fury is actually wrestling at WrestleMania, but he wants to wrestle at the show. However, the odds of these plans happening are considered slim as Fury is banned from entering the United States due to links with alleged Irish mob boss Daniel Kenahan. So let me, let me get this straight. So if I need someone whacked, or if I need somebody dumped in the East River, all I have to do is call Tyson Fury. It's good to know. Or I could call Tony D'Angelo, Tony D. Maybe he could do the same thing. He, uh, he threw, uh, well, two dimes over uh, into the East River, right? One or the other, man. I got nice connects with Tyson Fury and Tony D. A source told the media outlet, Tyson is well-loved at WWE, and him popping up in any match and a run to WrestleMania would generate huge headlines and fan interest. I don't know if that's going to happen this year if you got Steve Austin potentially coming back and John Cena being at the show and The Rock wrestling Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes winning the WWE Championship. Tyson Fury appearing at that event would probably be maybe sixth or seventh from the top of big things that happen at the show. And nobody wants to see him wrestle, so you guys can leave that shit right at the door. Nobody wants it. However, his immigration status is proving tricky to deal with. Tyson 
and the legal team are getting this whole gray and tricky area resolved. But non-entry, quite simply put, means non-payment. And people may not believe this, but turning up for a match or being a part of the shows, not even fighting, earns him several million dollars. So this issue with his working visa in the States is costing him a large amount of cash. And the WWE worked with foreign athletes all the time in aiding their visa processing for appearances. The legal team are on the sidelines offering support in this matter, but ultimately getting approval is on Tyson's head and how U.S. immigration assesses the case. The source pointed out that there are options for WWE and Fury as they could have him work a show when they go to Saudi Arabia. Now, the last time Tyson Fury was actually in a wrestling match was back in 2019 against Braun Strowman, beat Strowman by countout. One of the worst matches that I've personally ever seen, and he was at Clash of the Castle in 2022. Uh, back in September, he made an appearance there while trying to help Drew McIntyre win the world championship against Roman Reigns. He knocked out Austin Theory while he tried to cash in his money in the bank briefcase. Listen, I don't know. I just find that to be quite funny, and I wanted to uh, get that into the news. Uh, Tyson Fury being in the Royal Rumble, I have no problem with Tyson Fury being in the Royal Rumble, but if you want to feature him on WrestleMania's card in a one-on-one match, I'm going to have to say hard, hard, hard pass. Nobody wants to see that, and I think WWE would be absolutely fucking crazy to put that man on the fucking show and take a spot away from somebody else that's been there all because his name is Tyson Fury. Give me a break. I want to see Tyson Fury against nobody. Who are they going to put him up against? Drew McIntyre? They just sang Kumbaya at fucking Clash of the Castle at the end of the fucking match. They want to have that match happen? I don't give a fuck. Maybe him team up with Drew McIntyre? That's a possibility. I've said it from day one. The only role I'd love to see Tyson Fury in is an enforcer or a bodyguard of sorts for Drew McIntyre as he wrestles somebody going into WrestleMania. That's it. Other than that, nobody wants to see this man in the ring ever again. Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks says one of her biggest dreams came true amidst New Japan debut rumors. Sasha Banks is in Japan getting ready for Wrestle Kingdom 17, January 4th, 2023. Amidst a rumor of her New Japan debut, the former WWE star took to Twitter to reveal that one of her biggest Dreams came true, but did not elaborate on this. As previously reported, the former WWE Women's Champion wanted a WWE contract along the levels of Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, but WWE wasn't willing to give it to her because they feel... Now, I think this is the old administration talking. I think this is all Johnny Ace, Johnny Laurinaitis, and Vince McMahon. They said Sasha had, quote-unquote, peaked, which I think is absolutely ridiculous for somebody that just turned 30 years old. Imagine saying a 30-year-old and Sasha Banks peaked because they aren't Charlotte Flair, who's 37, mind you, and Becky Lynch, Sasha has peaked in WWE. They got no problem paying Ronda Rousey to fucking be one of the worst professional wrestlers of her craft. Right? In WWE. Absolutely bogging down and ruining the division. They got no problem paying Ronda, but they don't want to pay Sasha Banks, who is already at 30 years old, a certified Hall of Famer. Sure thing. Sure thing, Vince. And then you wonder why people don't want you back. I don't know what one of her biggest dreams is. One of her biggest dreams, if I'm making a logical guesstimation here, is working New Japan. Maybe she signed a deal to work several dates with New Japan, and that's what it is. She's going to be there on January 4th. What she's going to be doing, nobody knows. I would assume Kyrie retains the IWGP Women's Championship, and then we see Mercedes Monet show up on January 4th, and she's in the ring doing her boss shit, and we got Mercedes back in action in January. I don't know. Whatever the case may be, you know where I'm going to be? In the corner of Sasha Banks. And finally, guys, WWE had plans to bring toxic attraction to the main roster without Mandy Rose. I don't know why, because toxic attraction without Mandy Rose is nothing more than toxic. They are not the attraction. Mandy was the attraction. WWE, as you guys know, released Mandy Rose earlier in the month because of adult photos and videos she was posting on Fantime. 
Now, while speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer discussed Toxic Attraction's promo on Tuesday night. The tag team said the group never had a leader and never mentioned Rose. I don't know why that would ever make television. That just insults everybody's into. Now, I didn't watch NXT on Tuesday night. I didn't really care to bother with NXT, but if it's sounding the way that I'm reading it, they never mentioned Mandy Rose? Mandy Rose was never mentioned? Why? Why was Mandy Rose? So 413 days of her title reign were a complete, what was it, a fucking dream? What did I dream of Mandy Rose holding the belt for 413 days? Who led Toxic Attraction the entire 413 days? If not for Mandy Rose, they had no fucking lead. Give me a fucking break. They had no leader. My God, who writes this shit and how it makes it past quality control is ridiculous. Meltzer noted that WWE did have plans at one point to call up JC Jane and Gigi Dolan as a tag team without Mandy. Fail. They would have absolutely been like everybody else. It's what they have to do. They have to get past it, says Meltzer. The plan was to call them up to the main roster without Mandy anyway. You know what? I'm going to say this again, and I'm going to hope that it is willed into existence. I know a lot of people are saying, well, why don't you just pair Sonya Deville with Mandy Rose because of the correlation with Sonya and Mandy being legit real-life best friends? Sonya Deville would bring a different feel to Toxic Attraction. Mandy was a different version of Toxic. Sonya Deville could be a completely different version from Mandy as far as Toxic Attraction goes. But I don't think WWE should deviate away from the Toxic Attraction vibe that Mandy brought. I think Sonya would be a nice compliment because of the Mandy correlation, but it's not going to really be a toxic attraction. I honestly think Chelsea Green fits like a glove for toxic attraction. I think her being the leader and her being the focal point while getting others over because of her star power and her sexuality, I think that would be a great compliment to what toxic attraction was with Mandy Rose. I don't know what the plan is. I don't know when we see Chelsea Green. I know there are rumors that she shut down her OnlyFans because she will be joining WWE in 2023. The the earliest we will see her probably is a debut in the Royal Rumble. But I honestly think after that, Toxic Attraction led by Chelsea Green is the absolute picture-perfect way to get Toxic Attraction on the main roster if that is the plan for both Gigi and Jay-Z. Because without a leader, they are nothing. They are not there yet. They are still green as grass. Gigi's not a good promo. JC's not a good promo. They don't really carry themselves well without somebody like Mandy leading them. Mandy complimented them and raised their stock. I think without a leader, especially somebody like Mandy, you're not going to find somebody like that overnight. Chelsea Green is a perfect compliment to them, and I think that would really elevate them to where they need to be on the main roster. Guys, that is all I got for you. Hopefully you enjoy this extra today. I will be back live on Friday. With SmackDown, huge SmackDown. John Cena and Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. What is going to happen to really kickstart this Bloodline Sami Zayn storyline going into 2023, man? I can't wait. It is going to be tremendous. The biggest tag team television main event of the entire year happens on Friday night. And I will be live on Off The Script for SmackDown right here on Off The Script in the OTS venue. Make sure you guys go and follow me on social media for all the latest updates at JD from NY206. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. Make sure you guys go check out all the other videos if you missed anything on the channel. And please hit that thumbs up on the video. We need a 1,000 likes minimum. I would really appreciate it. So the algorithm gods treat us well going into the new year. Guys, I'll see you live Friday night on Off The Script for SmackDown. Until then, have a great Thursday. Have a safe and happy holiday if you're celebrating early, and I'll see you guys live Friday night for SmackDown.